Hello YouTube, what's going on? My name's Thomas and I just wanted to address the issue of subnetworks within the YouTube industry. Um, as of right now, YouTube has recently released a new subnetwork policy which basically prohibits um, MCNs from creating subnetworks or managing subnetworks um, or other types of third parties, um, specifically relating to access to the, um, well, direct or indirect access to channel roll-up tool and specific things like that. Basically, YouTube's sensitive content management tools used to manage YouTube partnership programs, monetize videos, link channels, that type of thing. Um, now, obviously, there has been a lot of problems in the industry leading up to this, which has resulted in the subnetwork ban, uh, specifically relating to the um, third-party access to sensitive tools that is hard to manage, um, especially, you know, when you give that access to a third party, uh, at that point, it becomes a liability issue. And I think that's the main problem that YouTube's having with this. Um, there's other, there's also the problem too, as far as confusion in the marketplace and misrepresenting the company that you're applying with. Uh, for example, a lot of YouTube networks will go out and recruit a sub networks of an MCN. Uh, when those sub-networks approach channels and they say, hey, you know, sign up for me, sign up for my network, um, they aren't recruiting on behalf of the company that actually has an established relationship with Google. What they're actually doing is recruiting on behalf of their own brand that acts as a sub-network of the parent MCN, the parent MCN having that relation with Google. So, for example, network A has a relation with Google. And then network B then works with network A and establishes their own subsidiary or their own brand um, under network A. And they go off through that brand and recruit their own partners. And then those they get compensation for that. They act as a third party recruiter or referral. And the problem with that is that it creates a lot of confusion and a lot of issues within the marketplace. And as of right now, YouTube is banning that practice, uh, specifically because, again, it causes confusion and it has to do with access to sensitive tools such as managing partners, managing people's channels. Um, I mean, it comes to the point, too, where do you want people that you don't know and that um, don't know what they're doing and may not be properly trained, having access to your channel's video manager, to content ID, to some of these powerful tools. There has been a lot of abuse in the past. I know myself personally, I've seen some of the issues being, you know, a former, um, former network owner myself, and having been in the industry for about two or three years. I pretty well know it inside and out, and I can tell you right now, there has been a lot of abuse. And I think that's what YouTube's trying to crack down on with these sub-networks. Uh, they're trying to prevent escalations and liability issues uh, that could stem from that, which very well could happen. Um, and I guess right now the situation is that um, all the major MCNs are currently working with their partner managers, which is the person that YouTube assigns to work with the MCN or in this case, the network A or the parent MCN. And they're trying to, you know, figure out what's the best way moving forward. So if you own a subnetwork under an MCN, uh, the best thing to do is to contact your network manager or contact an authorized representative uh, from your MCN, work with them and see what's the best way moving forward. Um, some of the ideas that have been floated around the industry involve terminating the subnetwork and just acting as a recruiter on behalf of the MCN itself, which I think is what YouTube's original attention, intention was anyway, is to have it so that if you're going to recruit for the MCN, you need to A, be trained, and B, be representing the actual MCN. I think that's the problem that YouTube is trying to solve. They're trying to push that. Um, and that might be the proposal that a lot of subnetworks could end up getting. Now, one of the things that 
I wanted to bring up is, again, the amount of corruption and the amount of problems in the network industry leading up to this. There are reasons that YouTube took this action. A lot of them have to do with um, people getting access to content management systems that they aren't supposed to get access to and that they aren't authorized to have access to um, from YouTube's perspective. And there's also, again, the liability issue and false advertising is a huge one. A lot of subnetworks will go around saying, we have direct relations with YouTube, we're YouTube certified, um, you know, we're direct, you know, and they'll offer these revenue shares and such, but they don't actually talk about the parent MCN that they're under. They make it look like they are their own independent network, and in reality, they're not. And this is something that YouTube is not a big fan of. And understandably so. So I just kind of wanted to offer my perspective on that. Um, again, this has to do a lot with the abuse in the network industry and a lot of the confusion, specifically confusion for partners that are trying to figure out what's the best network. And then they see like 50,000 networks on the go and it's just confusion. It's chaos. Um, so it will be interesting because within the next 30 days or so, a lot of the subnetworks will be terminated um, because MCNs will be given a certain time period upon which to terminate their subnetworks um, or face dire consequences, um, consequences I won't get into, but um, this is basically the situation. Um, and originally, this had been a panic uh, with Creative Nation. Um, originally last month in May, they were told to shut down their subnetworks. However, they were the first ones, and they kind of said all subnetworks are going to get shut down May 21st, and that caused a lot of confusion. Um, I think what they meant to say was that Creative Nation subnetworks are going to get shut down on May 21st, um, but they made it sound like everybody on YouTube as far as subnetworks are getting shut down on the 21st, and it caused a lot of panic, and it was a bit of misinformation, and kind of the way that it was worded um, caused a problem, but I think what the point is at this, at this point in time is that some networks are going to get terminated, um, and those that still run networks and such like this will probably work with the parent MCN and see if there is a job offer or something so they could recruit on behalf of the parent MCN. That's probably what will happen with a lot of companies and that's perfectly legitimate. Um, and again, you know, just stay tuned for press releases from YouTube and from the major MCNs. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.